Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. Today we're going to be working on the Honda EU 2200i inverter generator. Today I'll be showing you how to check your valve clearances and adjust them if needed. Um, we're at the 200 hour service interval and with this generator my goal is to give it perfect service slash maintenance so I can see how long it lasts before it dies and so far I've done everything I'm supposed to at every um, service hour interval. So let's get into the valves and I'll show you how that all works. Alright, so the first thing we're going to start off with is we're just going to take all the plastics off this thing and that way we can fully expose the motor and have a lot of working room. So we're just going to go ahead and take all these plastics off. I'm going to start with the side cover where you check your air filter and your oil. I'm going to come back here to the muffler. I'm going to take this back one off. And you can just leave your screws in the plastics you took them off of. That way you don't lose them. Okay, so what's going to need to happen now is we're going to need to take our fuel tank off and these top little braces so that we can expose our pull starter so we can take our pull starter off and then that way we can be able to align the timing marks that are behind this pull starter with the engine so that the it's going to have timing marks here that we need to be able to see and the pull starter is in the way. And then that will allow us to take our valve cover off, look at it, and then check our valve clearances. And if we need to adjust them, we can. So let's get to taking this off. All right, so we were able to lift the tank up. It just has these two little hooks that go into rubber grommets, which hold it. So we've got this stuff out of the way. Now, just to make our life easier, we're going to go ahead and oh, let me adjust this. Just to make our life easier, we're going to go ahead and move this little side mount for the gas tank again on this side. That way, it's just we have more room to work. That's all we're doing here is we're making our life easier. Okay, so now we can see how exposed our starter is. We'll go ahead and get to work on that. So we got the pull starter off. Now I'm going to rotate this carefully. We do got a ton of pieces. Now I'm going to bring the camera in. Because this is where it's going to get a little tricky. Let me see if I can get a good angle. Okay, let's see if it can focus a little better. Okay, so this little triangle thing right here, this is a timing mark. And that is going to help you find top dead center compression, so TDCC. And that's going to allow us to know that both of the valves are closed. Then we'll be able to measure our valve lash and see if it's in, in spec or not. Okay, so what's going to happen here is, is these are the fins that get turned by the pull starter when you want to start your motor. And you're going to want this piece of the fin lined up here and then this piece that is flat right here that I'm touching lined up with the little arrow and if that isn't on top dead center when we take our valve cover off then we'll rotate it again and line up this one over here and then that should give us um, 
top dead center. So it's one of these fins are not able just simply because you'll rotate it one more time. Okay, so now we're going to come up here where the spark plug is. We're going to unplug this spark plug. And then we're going to take these four bolts off here. And that should expose where we need to go. Okay, so I got this cover off. And it's a little bit stubborn to get off because you do use a liquid gasket maker to seal the cover. So now that we got the cover off, we can come in here and we can see our valves and we can see our, our belt that does our overhead cam. So basically, um, when I was in school, a simple way they taught me for screw and lock nut to know that you're at top dead center is if you can move your intake and your exhaust valves. So I'll be quiet. You hear that? So there's play on both of these, which means is both valves are closed, which allows me to know that I am at top dead center. So then I am able to now check my clearance. Spec for the intake. So this is the intake side because the carburetor is over here. So spec for the intake side is 14 millimeters plus or minus five. So if it's five above 14 millimeters, it's okay. And if it's five below 14 millimeters, it's still okay. So we're gonna go to 20. And 20 fits. With screw and lock nut valves, what happens is, is um, over time they get looser so the clearance grows on a screw and lock nut, lock nut type valve. Now with a valve you have to shim, over time it gets tighter and tighter and tighter on the shim. So then you got to put a smaller, smaller, smaller shim in. But screw and lock nut, it just progressively gets looser. So I'm going to set my feeler gauge to 14 because that's what spec is, plus or minus 5. And then I'm going to set my screw and lock nut to that new spec. Okay, so right here I have my 13 millimeter feeler because it goes 13 to 15. But what I was just saying is, is that the, oh, sorry, is that with screw and lock nut, it grows over time. And if your valve's not opening all the way and and when it's not opening all the way, you restrict airflow to get into the cylinder, fuel flow, you restrict the amount of exhaust that can come out your exhaust valve. So you really want to make sure your valves are in spec because then that allows you to have peak performance. So I bought these Tusk screw and lock nut valve adjusters. You will need these because this is a special tool required item. So this little nut up here, this is a three millimeter square head. And then I believe that this guy is just an eight millimeter. No, it's a nine, sorry. It's a nine millimeter. Yep, so it's nine millimeter. That's how this tool works is it has a through port so you can send this through here so you can turn the three millimeter bolt or hold it in place technically and cinch up the nut so it doesn't move. So a little cheater's way of doing this is you're just going to stick your feeler gauge in there, break loose your nut. And then what I like to do is I just put a little bit of pressure. You gotta be careful because these valve springs are so soft. So see, I'm just, I have the feeler gauge in there the whole time. And I'm just checking my drag to where I like it, where there's a slight drag. So now I'm going to leave 
my feeler gauge in there. That way, if I get a little weird, I don't mess it up. So I'm going to put this back on. And I can see I didn't turn anything. Now I'm just going to cinch my bolt back up. Now the torque spec for this is 7.7 .7 foot pounds, but as you can see, there's no way for me to check that, but I guess technically. So the, the valve lash clearance spec for this exhaust is 20 millimeters plus or minus four. So at the biggest, it should be 24 millimeters. So I'm just going to start off by putting in a 25 millimeter feeler gauge. And if I feel like it's too loose, then we're going to need to tighten up the valve a little bit. Okay, so I got the feeler gauge in there. I like how it is, so I'm going to go ahead and tighten it up. Okay, so I did the same thing exactly on this exhaust valve as I did the intake. I put the feeler gauge in there. I set it how I liked it, and then it has slight drag, so that means it has good contact on both sides, but not too much to where it doesn't want to move, or it's pushing down the valve spring. Now, I forgot to mention, when you're making sure you're at top dead center, there are two notches on this back side of this cam gear, I guess you'd call it, for to let you know you're at top dead center and they line up with this right here, the top of your um, valve cover where it would see. Okay, so if you look, you can see it, especially on this side, but right where my finger is, see there's like a flat line. And then you come over here, there's a flat line right here too. You want to see both of those lined up with this thing I'm touching. I don't know what the technical term would be. But basically, when those are lined up, that means, again, you're at top dead center. Now, if this line was up here, then you'd be in big trouble because you wouldn't be at top dead center. Okay, and that's it for how to adjust the valves on your EU 2200i generator. Now, all that would be left is to scrape off this gasket right here because this is a liquid gasket. So we're going to scrape that off and put our cap back on and you would be good to go. Just reassemble the plastics how you took them off and, and that's it. All right, as you can see, we got our new liquid gasket maker on there. We got our cover. We're going to go ahead and put this on. And we're gonna snug her down with the bolts. And then uh, I'll just do a time lapse of me putting it back together. But yeah, that is how you do it. And thank you for watching. Thank you for watching. I'm still trying to figure out how to talk better on the camera, explain things, and show better angles. I'm still super new to this YouTube stuff and filming what I'm doing, but hopefully that helped you out a little bit. Just remember that the valve clearance for the intake is 14 millimeters. The valve clearance for the exhaust is 20 millimeters both for plus or minus four millimeters so you can be four millimeters above spec or four more millimeters below.
but thanks for watching please like and subscribe i'm trying to trying to grow this make it consistent and the last thing to do is uh turn her on and make sure she starts because we just got done working on it so let's see if she starts first pull like she normally does that's my baby thanks for watching